Hello and welcome to the Middle School Bookmarker Super Quick Book Preview Show. This episode, we're checking out The Ogress and the Orphans by Kelly Barnhill. Let's give it a preview and see if you want to read it. Jumping into our passage preview, Chapter 1. Pay attention. Listen, this is a story about an ogress. She is not who you might think she is, but really, is anyone? The ogress lived in a crooked house at the far edge of town. She enjoyed baking and gardening and counting the stars. Like all ogres, the ogress was quite tall. Even sizable adults would have to crane their necks and squint a bit to say hello. She had feet the size of tortoises, hands the size of heron's wings, and a broad, broad brow that cracked and creased when she concentrated. Her skin was like granite, and her eyes looked like brand new pennies. Her hair sprouted and waved from her head like prairie grass, stiff and yellow and green sometimes spangled with daisies or dandelions or creeping ivy. Like all ogres, she spoke little and thought much. She was careful and considerate. Her heavy feet trod lightly on the ground. This is also a story about a family of orphans. There were 15 orphans living in the orphan house at the time our story begins, several years after the ogress first arrived in town. There were too many children from one house, but they made do. Their names were Anthea, Bartleby, Cassandra, who preferred Cass, Deirdre, Elijah, Fortunate, Gratitude, Haram, Iggy, Justina, Kai, Lily, Maud, and the babies Nanette and Orpheus. They were good children, these orphans, studious and hardworking and kind, and they loved one another dearly, ever so much more than they loved themselves. The ogress, too, was hardworking and kind and generous. She also loved others more than she loved herself. This can be a problem, of course, sometimes, but it can also be a solution. Let me show you how. That'll wrap up the passage preview. Let's take a look at some reviews. We see on Amazon that it has a perfect 5 out of 5 stars. And Common Sense Media gives us a 4 out of 5 stars, rating it as appropriate for ages 10 plus. We're about to do the back of the book blurb, but first, if you're enjoying this book preview and it's helping you figure out if you want to read this book, would you mind hitting like and subscribe, maybe sharing with a friend? That'll help me grow the channel. Stone in the Glen, once a lovely town, has fallen on hard times. Fires, floods, and the other calamities have caused the people to lose their library, their school, their park, and even their neighborliness. The people put their faith in the mayor, a dazzling fellow who promises he alone can help. After all, he is a famous dragon slayer. At least, no one has seen a dragon in his presence. Only the clever children of the orphan house and the kindly ogress at the edge of town can see how dire the town's problems are. Then, one day, a child goes missing from the orphan house. At the mayor's suggestion, all eyes turn to the ogress. The orphans know this can't be. The ogress, along with a flock of excellent crows, secretly deliver gifts to the people of Stone in the Glen. But how could the orphans tell the story of the ogress's goodness to the people who refuse to listen? And how can they make their deluded neighbors see the real villain in their midst? The Ogress and the Orphans by Kelly Barnhill is a fantasy book. It's definitely like a fairy tale. It is 400 pages long, and the audiobook is 13 hours and 7 minutes. All right, let's wrap this baby up. Moment of truth, is this book for you? If not, we have a ton of other book previews on the Middle School Bookmarkers YouTube channel. If you like sports books, check out Ghosts. If you like funny books, check out The Worst Class Trip Ever. If you like sci-fi, check out Virals. Thank you so much for looking at this book with me. Be sure to hit like and subscribe, and I hope you find something that you want to read.